Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Transform with AI with Pluto 7, where we uncover the real world effect and transformative change brought about by machine learning, AI, and various data analytics technologies in today's supply chain. To truly uncover your supply chain's potential, you need a strong data foundation. At a surface level, it fosters connection between all nodes of your operations. But at its core, unlocking database insights and data-driven insights is now a critical aspect of maximizing your organization's output while offering the more, most value to your customers. To unlock more understanding on this concept, I've invited Prashant K. Dingra, Luto 7's Chief Technology Officer. Prashant has 29 years of experience in machine learning, data, and software engineering. Recently, he worked as an MD for machine learning and engineering at JP Morgan Chase. At JP Morgan, he was responsible for building transformative machine learning products and analytics solution. He formerly worked at Google Cloud and Microsoft to data-driven innovation in data engineering and machine learning. Prashant, it is great to have you in the Pluto 7 team. Could you please share some of what your perspective is on data foundation and how supply chain leaders across the globe can benefit from its this method of acquiring data and storing it for the future planning? Thanks, Manju, for the intro. I'm very happy to be here. Today, data foundation and data is a key to do innovation in supply chain. We are collecting more and more data, but the world is changing faster too. And for supply chain resiliency, it is very important that tomorrow's supply chains are data-driven. And to make it data-driven supply chain, data foundation is the key. Data foundation enables companies to build information flow that matches the supply chain flow. Using this, they get a digital view of their supply chain. On top of this data foundation, they can build a decision support system that allow their workforce to make decision. And with the right data foundation, they not only can make decision as, as an individual, but it allows teams to collaborate together and explore data, analyze data, and make decision together. So it may build a very good that um, very good data foundation enables good decision support system. And once you have a decision support system built in using advanced AI technique, one can also build a system uh, where supply chain can or, um, optimize the things and that uh, data-driven optimization and data-driven design can be uh, applied in, into a supply chain. So Prashant, that's very interesting. And with your background, having worked both on Azure and Google Cloud and both on the product side as well as on the services side, you have seen various enterprises adopt cloud and, and AI for business transformation. Now let's take a step back. You mentioned multiple things around the data, the data data governance and, and various things that, that, that fit into this equation of getting value. What is data's worth? And why does cloud make it more valuable today than what it has been decades back? Yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, data value depends upon who is the audience, who is using the data, and at what time they are using the data. So if one person uses the data that is less valuable versus the whole team uses the data that is much more valuable. Similarly, data sometimes ages with time. The, some data is valuable today, but it may not be valuable tomorrow. The goodness of cloud is cloud enables timely data availability. So it makes data much more valuable and it allows teams and enterprises, inter-enterprises or intra-enterprises teams to collaborate together. So if, if one team has built an insight from a data, another team can build additional context on that data. This makes the data very much, a very, very powerful. So adding more context, adding more insight, uh, uh, bringing heterogeneous data sources, combining them together is possible only in cloud because cloud is a place where you can ingest data, where you can process a lot of data, you can combine data, you can add context, you can improve data quality, and then 
you are doing it in a timely manner. So cloud is the right place to get insight from data and make it much more valuable. Thank you, Prashant. So Prashant, now as you look at how data can be more valuable to the enterprises, especially when multiple people are looking at the same data and collaborating. Now, the other element here is AI. And today, when you look at supply chains, they are broadly disrupted across all verticals, segments, uh, size of business, all geographies, and partly because the world changed with in many ways. Many ways from be it the war, be it COVID, be it economics, or a labor force, all of the above. Now, when you consider all these things and and when when the leaders from these enterprises look at AI to be an answer, how do you see AI fit into transforming supply chain from your perspective? Yeah, so um, AI is, will play a very powerful role to make supply chain intelligent supply chain. So first of all, we require data foundation so that uh, people are not making decision using Excel sheet and data is not hidden behind individual desk. So data foundation makes the data central. Uh, once there is a central data available and multiple teams and multiple individuals can collaborate on that data, AI can find patterns, AI can find signal which a normal user can't comprehend because uh, human knowledge is uh, limited and a human can only correlate few variables together. This is where AI becomes much more powerful. Using AI, one, one can uh, combine multiple variables and determine how changing one variable impact on another variable. You can do what if analysis. Uh, there is also uh, experimentation that, that play a role. And uh, using AI, uh, you can improve your scenarios uh, end to end. For example, um, if you have a supply chain, you can increase, you can use it to improve operational efficiency. You can use it to reduce the failure pattern. You can use it to increase your production. You can use it to identify customer and how those customers are getting impacted. And uh, that will allow you to determine what will be your demand forecast. And then you can use it to find more customers. So AI can play a role in an end-to-end -end supply chain where it help you build better product, it help you build product at efficiency, it help you reduce failures, and it help you deliver product to your customers. Thanks, Prashant. That was very insightful. Now, when you look at our customers, uh, many of our customers are large enterprises. They have built data warehouses, data lakes, Hadoop infrastructure. And this journey, they're not necessarily starting off fresh, but there's something different this time, right? Compared to the infrastructures, the teradatas, or whatever that they built over, a, over the last decade or two. But there's something different about the data foundation and why businesses need it. When you think about what you are seeing, how the next generation companies or the companies evolving into next generation data analytics capabilities uh, or uh, advanced analytics capabilities, what are some of the best practices that you can uh, you can uh, share that enterprises should be adopting to so that they don't make the mistakes of the past? Yes, I will share the things I have learned. Uh, enterprises sometimes take three to five iteration um, before they semi-succeed in a digital uh, transformation. And in AI domain, it can be even more complex. So one of the one of the pattern I have seen is in past enterprises identify a problem and they uh, they buy a solution from our outside. In AI, AI work on your data. So the data-driven things needs to be customized for your for your that enterprise data. So both the AI uh, enterprises as well as the vendors who are delivering AI needs to realize this that the data-driven things needs to be customized for that enterprise data. Then only this enterprise will get the right value from the data. So the build versus buy philosophy needs to be changed uh, for enterprises. Then only they will be able to gain benefit from their data. So that is um, practice number one. Um, second is uh, once uh, AI uh, enterprises are identified, 
that they want to gain value from their data using ai they need to uh, they need to determine which scenarios are more important and in which scenario they have the data available the relevant data available and if if they have a useful scenario and they have a relevant data available uh, they should try to deliver those scenarios and in some cases just by improving the data quality they will be able to build a uh, good out, uh, outcome and uh, those scenarios should work so they should um, identify data quality initiative if if they have a good scenario they have the right data but because of the right quality they are not getting it in some cases um, enterprises will realize that they uh, there are scenarios where other enterprises have uh, gained benefit but they are not able to gain benefit because they were not generating that data set it may be because of uh, um sensor unavailability etc so in those scenarios companies need to think through what signal or raw signal they need to generate and once they have those raw signal then they will be able to derive values from the that signal uh, my last suggestion will be uh, as we build uh, more and more complex ai to for a high value scenario um, high value scenarios can be built on a higher level abstract concept and higher level abstract concept may not be available in the raw data so companies need to think through how they can combine their internal data external data uh, and combine heterogeneous data set and build higher level concept so example is how much difficulty your customers are facing uh, or how much difficulty you have in supply chain difficulty is a overloaded word um, using multiple signal they can define it and they can um, then use it in in their supply chain so first like uh, um, recognize build versus buy philosophy that the things that depends upon your data um, needs to be customized for your data. Um, second is uh, identifying scenario and data set and match that they exist. And um, in those cases, uh, they need to focus on data quality to ensure they get the good value. If scenario is there, but data doesn't exist and generate those signal, then using those signal generate higher level concept and uh, using this process an enterprise should be able to generate value from their data. Thank you, Prashant. See, as you are describing it, right, we could uh, relate this to many of the enterprises that we have worked in the last five years across the world, many large enterprises to even SMBs for that matter adopting some of these along the journey. In the journey, we have seen customers bring their SAP data, bring their Google data or, or supplier partner data, the central repository. And, and many times, you know, they do expect magic out of it as in just get the insights or whether it's a forecast accuracy or preventive maintenance. But then it goes back to what signals exist in the data. And if it doesn't exist, it doesn't matter what algorithms you run. So this kind of maturity, we have seen our customers evolve over a year over year. And, and some of the, our customers, they started these journeys about four years back, like Cisco or, or Levi Strauss about uh, two years back. And uh, many of these customers uh, have learned, evolved, and we are glad to see them evolve year over year. When you look at uh, these companies and the journeys that, that, that they are taking, today and as, as things evolve. When it comes to factory automation, as an example, uh, there is a lot of sensors, legacy systems, and IoT devices that they would like to extract information out of. Or they would, they would like to install cameras and uh, sensors to get new insights. Are there any quick uh, insights or things to watch out for that you would suggest based on your experience? Yeah, so this is a uh, broad question, but um, the way I will look into it is um, if there are scenarios and companies wants to get in benefit from it, they should determine uh, what kind of a data set uh, these scenarios depend upon. And if these data set are also available uh, publicly or similar data set available publicly, for example, in a consumer domain, then they may be able to buy capabilities from outside straight away. For example, if you want to do a translation or if you want to identify entities from text or if you want to do face detection, because similar scenario exists in consumer domain, um, those kind of API exist and one can 
build out of the box um, API. If those scenarios are such that that uh, companies are, uh, it depends upon only on company data or these enterprises are building for competitive advantage, um, then these companies needs to um, and do the in-house development or combine and need to combine the in-house development as well as external buying. Um, and um, it, it makes sense in those scenarios to build this internal uh, internal competency um, so that uh, the enterprise can deliver these scenarios um, and themselves. And, and to do that, uh, they need to uh, train their workforce. They need to ensure that as they define this business use case, they should be able to articulate this or convert this business use case into analytics use case. Uh, for example, uh, somebody might say, I want to identify pattern or I want to find recommendation. What does it mean in analytics term? Um, 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 what are the things model will predict? Which data source, which data set will you use to generate what kind of a recommendation? So converting these use cases from business use case to ML use cases, then identify the metrics using which they will evaluate whether these analytics use cases are successful or not, which will be technical matrices and business matrices. And after that, um, they should uh, look into the data set and then do an experiment and um, um, if the experiment is successful, then company should um, plan for the operationalization. So um, use, using this journey where they identify scenarios and determine whether they will buy from outside or build from um, build in-house, then build competency, convert a use case into ML use case, define the matrix, do an experiment. Once the experiment is successful, then they can go and uh, do the full-fledged operationalization. Those will be the path to the successful outcome. Great, Prashant. Some of the experience that you have brought from decades of experience working with enterprises, both on building the software side as well as adopting it for enterprises, you have seen both sides. Now, with you and your team now enabling this knowledge and experience into the solutions like what Pluto 7 has with planning in a box as we continue to take it to the market, you are helping us now bundle all this knowledge and experience that the company has into these solution offerings so that the customers now don't have to experiment and explore and rather we reduce the chances of failure and increase the chance of success through this platform enablement with data foundation and ai to solve use cases now with that is there anything that you would like to give as an advice or an input in terms of how to evolve adopting these solutions? So whenever um, any enterprise wants to uh, adopt a solution or adopt a platform in a data-driven and AI-based platform, it is important that this platform needs to be transparent. Uh, the reason it, it needs to be uh, transparent as well as it may, they need to be, uh, they need to allow collaboration, they need to allow, they need to allow Extend, extensibility and they, they should be flexible. The reason these properties are very important in uh, AI and data-driven domain is the plurality of method required uh, to operate on your data is very, very high. So generally we build reference architecture using what size of data it is, what type of data it is. But AI-driven and data-driven methods are based upon what kind of a pattern exists in your data. For example, if you are doing a recommendation for a house versus recommendation for movie versus recommendation for laptop, uh, the data patterns are very different because you buy house once in 10 years, you watch movies once in a week, and you buy laptop once in six months. Even if the data sets are similar, they, the patterns are very different. The method requires are very different. So, uh, so to identify patterns in data, the plurality of method required is very high and these methods continue to get added. So if the platform or solution doesn't allow you to add or change method, it is likely that it will not work. So the platform and solution we are building at Pluto 7, we want to ensure that uh, they allow you to collaborate, they are transparent, they allow you to extend. So my advice is whenever anybody evaluate a platform or a solution, they should look for these properties. Great. Thank you, Prashant. For the audience, 
if you would like to hear more and if you have a valid business scenario uh, that you would like to uh, engage with our team please request for uh, for a free workshop on our website and we look forward to having continued conversation with that we end this episode with transformed with ai thanks a lot for joining thank you